key to reducing lameness is understanding cow behaviour. Today we're going to show you a video on the fundamentals of cow behaviour and stock handling. Impatient handling of dairy cattle is an important cause of increased herd lameness from trauma. All farmyard staff need to understand what is natural, normal cow behaviour. If they don't, you'll end up with herding pressure somewhere in the system which will result in foot damage and stress. We will start this video by looking at some normal cow behaviours. Let's look at how a cow normally walks. If a cow is walking unrestricted, the rear foot will naturally come down in almost exactly the same place that the front foot just left. Even if there are stones on the laneway, she'll be able to avoid them by careful placement of her front feet. As the cows drift along the laneway, they keep their heads down, looking for a safe place to plant each front foot. If the herd is hurried along, the cows have to bunch much closer than they would normally like, and the result is that their heads come up over the backs of other cows. When a cow's head is up, she can't see if her front feet will be stepping in a safe place. Now we know that a cow usually follows directly behind the cow in front of her. This is normal cow behaviour. The majority of dominant cows are with the leaders of the herd, but a significant number of dominant cows are present, scattered throughout the herd, including in the rear of the group. It is these dominant cows that maintain the following order. The first following order occurs along the laneway. When the cows arrive at the milking parlour, they change to a new order, the milking order. It is also a fairly set order, different to the arrival order. The cows will stand quietly in the yard with their heads down, chewing their cud, and then move forward as the milk cows move out of the bales. And here they are following one another in their new order, through the herd towards the bales. If there is enough room in the milking yard, the cows will be able to adjust from their walking order to the milking order. There is also a lot of dominant behaviour in the yard as cows are closer together. There needs to be enough space for lower dominant cows to move away. During wet weather, more stones and gravel are carried onto the yard concrete by the cow's feet, so it is important to allow sufficient space in the yards for cows to shift weight off the foot if it stands on a stone. They do this by lifting or lowering their head. So let's talk about the space you require in your yard. How much room do cows actually need for this? With larger breeds, such as Holsteins, you'll need between 1.8 to 2 metres squared per cow. And in smaller breeds, like Jerseys, you're looking at about 1.3 metres squared per cow. Calculate the area of your yard and then divide it by the number of cows you are milking. You will then know how many cows you can actually fit in your yard. The most common cause of lack of space and pressure in yards is inappropriate use of the backing gate. This causes the cows to compact in the yard, they raise their heads, push in among other cows resulting in unplanned foot placement. The backing gate must never be used to push. It should be used to gently take up space as the cows move forward. A bell on the backing gate will gently remind the cows to move forward. There are three simple rules that will guarantee that the cows won't be under pressure in the yard. Firstly, the backing gate must not be moved until at least two rows or two rounds are milked in most dairies. Secondly, the forward speed of the gate should be less than 12 metres per minute in round yards or 6 metres per minute in rectangular yards. And thirdly, the forward movement of the gate must not be longer than 5 seconds at a time. A key factor is to recognise that the cow is a slow-moving, heavy animal. We need to be patient. Impatience results in herding pressure, frightened cows, and of course foot damage. The cow is an animal of prey, so has to keep herself safe from predators, and they are easily frightened. Cows have a flight zone or personal space in which they feel safe. Every herd has a different flight distance. If a herd has never been hurt or has learned to trust you, then this distance may be quite short. When bringing the cows along the laneway, if you keep behind the herd and outside the flight distance, compaction of the rear group will be minimal. Also, if we come too close into this zone in the yard, they will be wary and anxious and turn and twist to escape. This often happens if we come out of the pit and feet are damaged on the concrete surface. Coming out of the pit to gather cows puts you in front of the shoulder and the cow turns away to put you behind her balance point. The cow's balance point determines which direction she will go to escape. A good stockman will realise this and use this to gently move cows. 
Cows recognise people, good or bad, so it's important to get a good relationship with your cows. Some things we do will frighten cows, such as fast movement, sudden or loud noises. Cows will respond to calls to come if they recognise you as a friendly person. It is better to gently call out or to talk to the cows to keep them moving on the laneway rather than just push them. In the milking parlour, train your cows to come at a call such as, come on girls. Cows will respond to a friendly tone of voice without fear, especially if they are trained right from calves and of course with a reward. Dogs will definitely frighten cows. You should never use dogs with dairy cattle. Cows respond positively and flow better if they have a routine. Everything should be done exactly the same every day. It helps to have a few basic rules to follow. Always allow your cows to gently drift along the laneway. Remember the two row rule and the five second rule. No heads up. Don't come out of the pit and always talk gently to your cows. Remember, cows are creatures of habit, and it may take some time, even weeks, to adjust to the new routines. So be patient and be prepared to work with your herd. For more information on the Healthy Hooves Project, you should visit the Dairy Australia website.